Today we are going to talk about the valence bond theory. The valence bond theory regards the uh, formation of the covalent bond in another different vision than the other previous theories. So here's the point. Previously people thought that the um, orbital shape in the atom has a planar shape or a planar structure. This means that they look like this. And this is the nucleus in the middle. The orbital would have a planar shape. It means like it's drawn on a piece of paper or something. Well, that's not true. Accordingly, when the people discovered that the electron is not just a negatively charged particle, but also it has some wave properties, they changed the theory of covalent bonding into the valence bond theory. So, the valence bond theory deals with the covalent bonding acting in a three-dimensional space, not a planar space. For example, the hydrogen atom. So, this is the nucleus of the hydrogen atom, and the hydrogen atom contains one orbital and contains one electron, and this orbital is the 1s orbital. So in order to completely fill this orbital, we need another extra electron because, because this is the maximum capacity of the 1s um, orbital. So we need another hydrogen atom containing the other electron. So here's what happens. As the orbital here is in the form of a sphere, so a process happens which is called an overlap. So the two orbitals fuse together, forming one big orbital, or one big sphere, containing the two electrons, and in the middle, the two nuclei of the two atoms care to be found. This is uh, the concept of covalent bonding in the valence bond theory. And we had an example of the simplest atom which is hydrogen. It's the same as hydrogen fluoride because uh, the outermost sublevel of fluorine is the 2px and the 2px contains one electron so it needs just another one electron to be uh, stable. So, it needs just one hydrogen atom in order to make the hydrogen fluoride atom stable. Now, let's move to a more complex molecule, such as the methane molecule. In methane molecule, we have a carbon atom and <clears throat> we have four hydrogen atoms in the shape of a tetrahedron. A tetrahedron is a pyramid. So the shape of the molecule looks something like that. So it looks like a pyramid. Now, <clears throat> how did this happen? Actually, Carbon contains just six electrons. So if we saw the electronic configuration, it would be something like that. We have the 1s, then the 2s orbitals, and then we have the 2p orbital, and the 2p, uh, sorry, the 2p sublevel, and the 2p sublevel contains three orbitals, which is the they are the px, the py, and the pz. <clears throat> so six electrons will be uh, distributed like this. We have two electrons in the 1s, two in the 2s, and we have two electrons here. And the pz is a vacant orbital. So theoretically, carbon can just make two covalent bonds because covalent bonding occurs in an orbital containing one electron and it needs another electron to 
make this orbital energy stable. So, what happens in here? Well, what happens is an electron from the 2s sublevel jumps to the pz orbital. So here we have four vacant orbitals or semi-vacant orbitals and they need to be stabilized. Here how a covalent bonding take place. But at the same time the energy of the 2p is a little bit higher than the energy of the 2s so these energy levels move a little bit <laughs> lower so that they can meet the energy of the 2s or they can all be of the same energy because they will all be making covalent bondings with hydrogen because all the hydrogen atoms have the same energy so each of the orbitals must have the same energy This action is called hybridization. And this hybridization takes place between orbitals of very near energy, like the 2s and the 2p sublevel. But for example, between the 1s and the 2p, no hybridization can take place. So, this is the situation in here. Now, <clears throat> each hydrogen atom can make a covalent bond with, with each orbital in here. Last thing, we name the hybridized orbital according to the original orbitals that took place making this new orbital. So here we used 1s orbital. I don't mean this, I mean as an s sublevel we just use 1s orbital which is that one and three orbitals of the p sublevel. So the name would be sp3 hybridization or the name of the orbital will be sp3 1 sp orbital so s1 so we don't type the 1 and 3 p orbitals so sp3. Finally in order to form the covalent bondings between the hydrogen atoms and that one carbon atom, uh, the new hybridized orbital should move or <coughs> put itself to a perfect place so that no repulsion occurs between the orbitals or the atoms, the hydrogen atoms. So first, this hybridized orbital protrudes a little bit away from uh, the other orbitals in order to make perfect covalent bondings and at the same time uh, the hybridized orbital move from each other so that the angle between each two orbitals is 109 degrees and 28 minutes so this prevents repulsive forces between the hydrogen atoms and each other. So this is how the hybridization takes place, or in other words, this is how the covalent bonding takes place between the uh, atoms in methane molecule. Now with our final example, the ethene molecule. Here we have two carbon atoms and four hydrogen atoms. The hybridization in this case is called sp2 hybridization. From the name, we can conclude that we will use one sp sublevel orbital and two p sublevel orbitals. So, as we have mentioned, the electronic configuration of carbon is. Um, 1s2, 2s2, and 2p2. So, the first step, as, as what happened in methane, an electron jumps from the 2s orbital to that vacant orbital in here, the pz 
And here is the different step. <clears throat> Instead of letting all the three orbitals move down so that they can meet the same energy uh, level of the 2s, what happens is this two of them get down and the pz orbital remains the same. So, this is the pz and these are the two orbitals. So this is the new hybridized orbital. It will be called S, according to that one, and P2, because we use two orbitals of the, B, of the P uh, subgroup. So this is SP2 hybridization. Why did this happen? Because we have two carbon, um, two carbon atoms. So the case will be like that. We have our two carbon atoms, and then we have three orbitals here. Okay. And as we know, the P sublevels has a dumbbell shape, so they look something like that. So the two on the outside, these two, they will make bondings with the hydrogen atoms. So covalent bonds in here. And at the same time, bonds occur between the two PZ orbitals of the two carbon atoms and one of the S of the hybridized orbitals also. Well, that's because carbon contains six electrons, so it needs four electrons in order to reach the stable state. Two supplied from hydrogen in each atom, and then remains two. So when the carbon bonding occurs between the two carbon atoms, they share these two, and each carbon atom gets to be energy stable. So that's the situation here and as in methane the uh, hybridized orbitals move until they reach a stable state until the angles between each two um, orbitals, hybridized orbitals is 120 degrees. This is when the, um, the, the whole molecule reaches a stable state. So that was the balanced bond theory and the next time we will talk about the molecular bonding theory it moves ahead more near to the reality of the formation of the covalent bonding between the atoms inside one molecule. So that's it for today until the next time and thank you for watching and see you.